think maybe we'll just begin so that um, there's a, I've got a lot to share with you. So I might as well get started. If people come in, they can join us. Um, my name is Edwina McDonald, and everybody calls me Eddie. And uh, I am a, uh, got lots of hats to wear. I am a parent and a foster parent. I do therapeutic foster care for multiple children's aid. I've been doing that for about 15 years now. My husband and I, Mark, we take on difficult children, emotionally challenged, and we do long-term care with them. So um, at this point, um, the, our oldest, our first child that came through our house is now 23, and she has three children of her own, and I'm a nana. <laughs> so um, life is very good. I have uh, six boys at home right now, um, uh, two, two of my foster boys, uh, 17 and 16, and then I have four of my own children. Noah is 16, Aaron is 13, and my twins, uh, twins are Nine. May I have your attention, so, please? Session number one is beginning now. Again, session number one will begin immediately. Thank you. There we go. So, life is busy at home, and so I know with families, it is uh, it can be a challenge. Um, so I'm involved with uh, a high school, uh, Christ the King, and St. Joseph's School in Acton. Um, I'm on parent council, and I'm part of CPIC. My focus on CPIC is really faith development because the other hat that I have is I'm a spiritual director as well. Hello. Hello. Um, let's see what else am I missing. And the other thing I do for the school for uh, the grade eights is I prepare them for confirmation. And um, the teachers do the confirmation preparation. I help them understand the cultural connections. And so some of the stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you today uh, are uh, some of the items that I use, some of the videos, etc., that I use uh, in the classroom to kind of help them understand um, their faith better through their lenses. And so that's really what I'm hoping that today we can do is see where, um, what you can do to help engage your own children uh, and encourage them in their faith development. So the question is, um, before we get started, like what is the spirit? What is their spirit? And um, you know, we know that we have a physical side, and we do take care of our physical side. We eat, we exercise, we're supposed to. Um, and you know, we, we, we're very much aware of that, our physicalness. We have an emotional side. Um, Bishop Crosby today was talking about that. You know, just, you know, we, we're very much aware that we have a physical component to ourselves. Hello. And we also have uh, an, our, our, our mental, our intellectual side. And we, we, look, we educate, we read, we do things to develop that. But we don't see our spiritual side. We really are hardly aware of it. In fact, the majority of people take that piece, if it is aware, they put it aside and they call it religion. Or they call it something that is, they don't want to be associated with, usually because of you know, what their previous experience was. But we really do have a spiritual component to us. And it really, it would be so much easier if we could see our spirit. Because if we could see our spirit, we would know how, how important it is. How important it is to, to, um, to be in, engaging in it and working through it. But we don't have that luxury. So we just, that's where our faith comes in. And I'm just going to turn my pages just so I don't miss anything. Um, I, I like the fact that we have the new Roman Missal because it really does um, look at, take that word, you know, we say, uh, we used to say, peace be with you, and we'd say, and also with you. But now we say, peace be with you, the priest says, and we say, and with your spirit. I love it because we're saying, we're connecting with the spirit. We're identifying four times in the Mass that we have a spirit. Not, we leave. We leave Mass and we can remember, you know what, that, that's a really good cue for us to re remember that we have a spirit. And they did that because the, there was the, um, you probably know this already, but the, 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 the New Roman Missal has taken the words and made them truer to the Latin, to, to the actual Latin sense. And so, you know, before we were saying, you know, and with you, it's just like, hey, and you, and you, you know, but really it's with your spirit. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really good thing what they've done. So one of the things that I ask the, the grade eights to do is to think about this, to, 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 to ponder this. Are we human beings having a spiritual experience? Or are we spiritual beings having a human experience? 
And that, you know, we, we know that we are, we come from God, we're taught we come from God, we enter into this world, we live throughout our, this life, we have all sorts of challenges, then we die and we go on to the eternal. Our hope is to go back to God. So if that's the case, we are just here for a short period of time. This is like a, a, a glimpse. It's just a small portion of eternity. So, you know, I think that it, it's important to, to, to realize you know, or, or question, are we human beings having a spiritual experience, the occasional spiritual experience, or are we really spiritual beings living out this short period of time having a human experience? And if the case is we're having a human experience, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, then we need to focus more on that spiritual realm, that spiritual world um, that, that we're called to, to return to. Um, I really like uh, Father Larry Richards, and I'm going to show you one of his uh, videos after. Um, the general will of God is that we are saved. We become holy, and then we go to heaven. This means you'll become a saint. What a great plan. I love it. Because when you think about it, we are saved. When are we saved? Well, we're saved when we recognize that we have a spirit and that we need to work on it. Well, that's when the light bulb goes on and says, so now the decisions I'm going to be making are going to include God. And is this part of God's plan? I'm going to trust God. Like When you recognize that, that, that there's something more, that's when you become saved. Um, uh, that recognition. We be, then we become holy because when we become holy, it's holy is, is 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 action. You have to do something. I mean, we're all we're all given the Spirit. God has blessed us, and we're baptized, and we have that gift. But we still have to do work. It's just not a, a done deal. You're not in. You still have to do work. That's why we're having this this time here. And then we go to heaven because that's really where we want to be. We all want to be back with the Father. And then you become a saint. Then you join the communion of saints. And that's when we can continue to work on um, from with God for our, our, our children and our families once we've left. And it is a great plan. So what is spiritual development? Well, it is um, a recognition of the holy. It's knowing that there is something... Uh, out there that, that, that God is there and once you realize that then you start moving that's the action then you start you, you pursue the whole you try to get to and you learn and you become more uh, involved in your faith um, it's a longing to be with God and then to follow some you know follow various practices different types of ways of developing that and you know when we are um, in those moments of helplessness, that's when we cry out. That's when we, we search for, we long for something more. And, uh, the, and in that, we find that we get a sense of hope. And um, when we do our rosary, I don't know if you, not everybody knows this, that, that there's those first three beads at the front here, you know, that's for the, the theological virtues of, of faith, hope, and charity, or faith, hope, and love. And those theological virtues are given by God. We can't wish ourselves to have more faith. We can't, um, you know, oh, I hope, I hope I can have more hope. No, that's, those are gifts, and that's why we pray them at the beginning of, of every rosary, uh, for faith, for hope, a deepening of faith, uh, a deepening of hope and, and love. So, and when you have those moments of a sense of hope, that's when you have moments of peace in your life. That's when you go, oh, this is good. This is good. God is good. So spiritual development is the movement towards holy. But, so now we're going to start thinking about, now that we know what spiritual development is, or have an idea of it, um, it's what's next. And how do we, how do we help develop our children? Well, we do that um, by taking care of ourselves first. And my, my Russian naturopath, uh, Dr. Alexei, always says, and he says this, uh, like this, in order to treat the children, you must first treat the mother. So 
just you know we have to take care of ourselves first. And when you're on a on a, a, a an airplane, you know they always say you know in case of emergency and the oxygen mask falls, you give it to you first and then your child, right? That's what they do. So it's the same thing. We need to be um, we need to have our work on our spiritual development in order to help our children. We can't just give it to our kids and not live it and experience it ourselves. And one of the things that happens is that we are, we, we're kind of, I don't want to say blocked, but it, our early experiences frame how and what we give our children. So if, um, uh, let me just see, I just want to double check here if I say this later, or if you, if you, if you, if you, if you don't um, have a reason to, to change, then you're just going to continue um, doing what you've done all along. So if your parents uh, taught you a certain way of thinking about the church, then that's all you're going to know and, unless you challenge it. And so when you look at the teachings of the church, say for example the Pope. Uh, when I grew up, I grew up, uh, my, my mother was a Catholic, a quiet Catholic. My father was Anglican, so we had to, we went to Anglican church. Actually, the children were dropped off at the Anglican church while my parents went to visit my grandparents and then we were picked up. And um, so, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really associate church with God. I sang in the choir, but I didn't know who I was singing to or what. I was, that's just what I did. My parents weren't involved at all. So uh, when I was a teenager, I started working at Kentucky Fried Chicken. And the, um, you know, the, the thigh piece has a little, little end. And my parents say, oh, you got the, you got the Pope's nose. I got the Pope's nose, what's that? You know, the, that's, the, that's the part of the chicken that goes over the fence last. And in the, what they were trying to say is that the Pope's, you know, not somebody to be respected. It's the, it's the last piece. It's nothing. And so I grew up thinking that I had no idea who the Pope was um, or why I should respect or I knew nothing about, um, the, you know, the, um, anything at all. I did not know anything at all. And only as an adult did I start to learn more. And now, I mean, and I, there's so much to learn. Uh, but now I always make sure when I do my rosary and my prayers that I say, you know, and our Father, and Hail Mary, and a glory be for the Pope's intentions because he knows really what needs to be prayed for. And so I pray for him. So, you know, now, but before that, I didn't have a reason to challenge it because that's just what I knew. That's what, what, that's what. That was common. And then everybody in the kitchen would, would, would laugh. All my aunts and uncles, oh, yeah, I got the Pope's nose. You know, like, that was it. <laughs> so we have to challenge our beliefs. We have to challenge them so that we can grow. Because we're going to be teach. That's what, whatever we know, that's what we teach our children. We want to be accurate. We want to be truth. So um, this is a, a little video from Father Richards I'd like to show you. David, do you want to close the door? And I didn't get to introduce my um, sidekick today, David, who's uh, been helping me and taking good care of me. So uh, I'm just going to show this to you, and then we'll have a we'll talk about it in a minute. Then. Tell me you want to go to heaven. Yes, Father. What do you want to do to prove to me you want to go to heaven? Well, Father. Uh, you know, we go to Mass when we feel like it, 45 minutes to an hour, we, depending on who the priest is, and we try to be good people. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you have a daily prayer life, and a lot of guys say, oh, Father, I try. I crap, you try. Oh, just try to be a good person, and, you know, try to love others, and if you can pray, don't, why don't you? <clears throat> I really think that for men, men need to know who they are. Who they are, first and fundamentally, is who Jesus was a beloved son of the Father. The perfect man was Jesus Christ. And so if you look at the life of Christ, and if he's the perfect man, then he shows us how to live. And the way he tells us how to live is to give up our life for others. So I call men spiritual women, sorry. But so often I'll sit there and say at a conference, I'll say, gentlemen, if someone's gonna break into your house and kill your wife and kids, would you take a bullet for that? And they go, yes, Father, of course I would. And I go, well, the world, the flesh, and the devil is breaking into your family every day. And because you're not a man of prayer, committed prayer, you're letting your children and wife unprotected. So what you got to do is you have to be a man of prayer. And in your prayer, you sit there and say, you got to go through me before you get to my wife and kids. The secular culture has caused a situation where a lot of young men who are growing today have become 
wimps, barbarians, or buffoons. You don't see it on TV all the time anymore. I, I, I can't fail to watch a TV program and I see the buffoon typically on TV or the incredibly violent man, a true Christ man, a Christian man, wants to be able to provide and protect for his family and he has to have the courage to do that. Real men always pray. Real men always love. Real men say I'm sorry. Real men forgive. We live in a culture of unfinished men who don't really know how to love, how to share with other men in a proper way, or even how to share with women. And so you see abuses of what true manhood really is without a solid foundation in the interior life, in talking with our Lord, in talking with, uh, with Mary, without those there is not going to be any fulfillment. I wrote this book and it's called Good Man. It comes from the 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. It's the last words King David said to his son Solomon. And he says, I'm about to go the way of all flesh, meaning he was going to die. And he says, take courage and be a man. I love it because David was a man who was a murderer, he was a rapist, he was an adulterer. He was the worst of the worst. And yet we call him Saint David. Why? Because he was a man after God's own heart that when he fell, he didn't stay down. He kept looking, he kept repenting and saying, Lord, look at me without you, and then he'd keep going after God's heart. It's really about, do you have what it takes? It's really about standing up to be a man of God. It's, it's, it's about protecting our families, it's about protecting our church. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that we are communal by nature. There's such a value in a common effort to achieve a goal, especially in the heart of a man, and that there is a fulfillment that you do find when there is a concerted effort to go after something that, in a sense, is greater than yourself. For us to be authentic men, we need to have the courage to get up and keep struggling after God and say, God, I want your will more than anything else. I want your heart and to please your heart more than anything else. If we can do those basic things, pray and love, pray and love, we'll become great saints. We can change the world. My husband uh, showed this video to uh, the Knights of Columbus because he's part of the Knights of Columbus. And uh, back, I think it was last Christmas. And we were talking about it, and he showed it to me. I went, like, Really? It's kind of like assertive. Like, you really think that's okay? He goes, Oh, yeah, men need to be challenged, they want to be challenged. And, you know, it, it's something that's important to do. So he showed the video, and then uh, he said, well, well, you know, we talked about it, but carried on. And then in the summer, I was talking to a wife of a knight who had, was there for that. She said, I have to tell you, my husband had just become a knight, and uh, he went to his meeting, came back, and was, was, um, was so moved. She said, he came in and said, I am not going to let this happen. She had packed her bag. She was leaving that night. And he saw that video and said, I, if, I'm, I'm willing to stand here and, and not let the devil through to my family. They are now very involved in their church, their marriage. I mean, it, it, their marriage is saved because they brought Christ back into it and they recognize the importance. So that was, uh, that was really moving. And my husband went, really is hope. It was, it was important to do. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that um, families do have crisis. Women, if, if husbands and wives do uh, have challenges. And if you're ever at that point, or if you know somebody who is at that point, encourage them, of course, to go to church. Retroval is, is uh, out there. Well, a lot of people know about that. But um, to go, it's, of course, for husbands and wives to um, work things through. But the other thing is to look at um, counseling, but not just any counseling. If you can see a counselor that's Catholic, it makes a world of difference because that counselor's values and, and ideas may not be the same as yours. And having a Catholic perspective, I mean, we believe in marriage. We believe in the sacrament. It's a sacrament. And so if, if uh, a counselor doesn't get that, then they're not going to say, they'll say, ah, you know, he's got bad teeth, just let him go. You know, they're not going to really uh, spend time and, and try to um, work that through. So if, if you're ever at that point, if you know somebody's at that point, please encourage them to seek a, a Catholic counselor. 
Um, the other thing too is retreats. For men, uh, I mean women as well, I hope I get to the point that actually I've got sheets in the back with some retreat houses that you may want to look into for yourself and for your husband. My husband goes on retreat every year uh, to Mary Lake. Uh, you know, a lot of these places are uh, very reasonable. If finances are tight, they give a donation is good. Others, you know, they, this, it's, not, uh, it's not a crazy amount. But, and it's so worth it to get quiet and uh, make a commitment. And my husband makes it, it's, it's important. He goes, and I go as well at a different time of year. So that's uh, part of, of, your, of your own, but it's also for your family. My husband comes in a completely different person. He comes through that door after a weekend retreat. Everything is so much calmer about him. It's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's, it's effective. So, one of the greatest gifts we've received is our children, but our, the, the biggest challenge we have is how do we nurture um, uh, and prepare them to return to God, because that's where we're all heading back to. And it's a, it's a huge job. It's, it's, it's the biggest job ever to be able to make sure, like I don't want to be uh, to die tomorrow and not know that my kids are on the right path. So it's, it's imperative that we work daily on developing our children and having them know who they, who they belong to, where they come from, and where they're going. So there's just a few, uh, I guess there's, there's a, uh, an institute that did some statistics and they found that spiritual development um, encourages a positive, the kids feel more positive about themselves when they're involved in, in, in their own spiritual development. Um, and they have, they're more likely to be healthy, they're physically healthy, and they're less likely to get in trouble. And to me that's good considering, and I see that in my work, I see kids coming in that uh, don't have um, a, a spiritual foundation, a faith foundation, and they're, they're different, and they're hungry. These kids are hungry. I, I, you'll be hearing a song later that one of the boys that I had, he's, he's been with me for a year and a half, he's 17, never been involved with, with faith, and he was just mesmerized by the song. I said, which one do you think I should play? He oh, that one's really good. You know, it evolved, and he wanted to hear it again. They are hungry, and the messages are there. It's just quietly getting into them. So, um, so there's a few things that, uh, that the positives, you know, they they get better grades, uh, they ha they resist danger more, they have a better physical health and leadership. My one son is um, going to a leadership camp this weekend, and he's in Niagara Falls. With it, he's uh, been an altar server since grade four, and he's an extraordinary minister now for the last year, and he's off to leadership. And he better be a good boy. <laughs> but anyways, you know, so it. And that isn't because we said you need to do this, it was that the environment that he, he was in that created that, that created that openness to it. And, um, and there's just a less likelihood of these uh, challenges that kids have. And, they, and they're all, they all can be there. Every single one uh, of our children can be at risk for any of these things. And it's hard, I've been there with the difficult ones um, dealing with you know, drugs and alcohol and, and antisocial behavior. It's not fun. It's not a fun place for them to be. They're just devastated by the facts, by the choices that, uh, that they've made. Um, and it's really hard to come back, but it's still, I mean, it's a journey for them too. And it's not easy on the family. And some, you know, you know this is their, coming to our 15th, you know, we've just started our 15th year of, of fostering. And um, people say, how could you do that? Because they are tough kids. And it's prayer. It's the only way I've been able to do this. Whenever I felt like, like that's it, I've had enough, it's through prayer that I've managed to, uh, to carry on and as, as my husband and as the kids. The kids will say, you know, I'll say, one, one of the kids we had, I said, well, should we, you know, where are we at? And, and um, he said, we need to keep working at it. <sighs> you know, little ones know, kids know, you know, and, and, and why do they know? Because, you know, they go to church, because they hear, what we're supposed to be doing. It's very, it was, it's very beautiful to see kids um, lead the way. So this is one of the uh, videos that I show um, 
at grade eights. And it might be a little bit loud. Last one's a bit loud. And this is really about some of the tools to use for spiritual development. Okay, let's get right into this. My name is Agent Francis. I'm Agent Carlos. We're part of the CIA, the Catholic Integration Agency. We have a long tradition stemming back 2,000 years to the times of Agents Peter and Paul and all of the apostles. Our purpose is to protect and save souls in the real world. Our purpose is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, our founder. And this is what we do. We bring people to God. We help all people to avoid the occasion of sin. Are you in position? I'm in a row. It's time to switch. You need to get in there now. St. Benedict, who was known for having power over the devil. This one is our basic instruction manual, the Holy Bible. If you have questions, this has answers. Above all these weapons, there's a power that's greater, the Holy Eucharist, the actual presence of God that we get to receive at Mass. We are not alone. We have God. We have the Catholic Church. We have all the agents that have passed praying for us. This particular agent is St. Francis. That's the name I took when I entered the agency. He was known for his humility and for living in poverty. I took the name of St. Charles Borromeo, who stopped at nothing to save souls. This last file is very important. This file is yours. You get to decide what goes in it. Pretty fun, don't you think? I think I would have understood uh, um, confirmation better if I had seen that as a kid, you know? Uh, and kids respond really well to it. And it really is about utilizing those tools and understanding and understanding your faith better. But uh, going through 
helping your kids through their eyes, through their their uh, their world. I, I like the fact that they recycled after they after they dumped the <laughs> they the hole. So, um, you know, our challenges are the same as they were a generation ago, uh, in the last century, and even 4,000 years ago, you know, we hear it in the Bible, all the challenges they had. We are still experiencing those same challenges. But the difference in this, uh, this time is that uh, we have the Internet. And so everything's coming like this. It's, it's fast. It's hard. And there's so much. And it's really hard as parents to control that. And, and to put on those uh, boundaries, and so because they, because no matter where they go, whether it's at the library or you know at a friend's house, it's just a click of the mouse, and they can they can they can take on a, um, anything. They can just ask a question, type it in, and get it. So instead of you know, there's two things we can say: that's it, no internet, we're not doing this at all, we're not having computers or we can actually utilize it ourselves. And there is so many fabulous websites about uh, our faith um, that we can use and, and, and help our children to uh, share with their children uh, about using. And the Pope uh, just recently said to, um, you know, to use so this networking as, a, uh, as our, our modern day evangelization. So to make use of social media, to make use of it. And so instead of being afraid of it, like. Some days I just want to say, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to do all the technology. Thank you, David. He came and he did all this. And I'm like, I have no idea. Um, you know, embrace it. Enjoy it. Go in and, and use it for good. So how do we encourage and engage our, our children? Well, I've brought some, some things that people can look at. Different kind of, uh, different kind of things to, to use. Um, but I think the most important is, is mass, going to mass, and, and not being afraid to go to mass, go to mass daily, whenever you can. Um, go to adoration. I brought my twins to, to adoration every Friday and uh, when they were in JK and SK. And I remember one day we were leaving, and because uh, I picked them up after, after school, make it time for adoration and mass, and then uh, leave, and one said, I feel so good after coming out of church. They really are um, um, affected. You know, they, something good happens. Um, and don't be afraid of the crying baby. In fact, if there's a baby crying, give the parents support. Good for you, they're here. They all cry, eventually they stop. You know, I know we want to say, I can't hear the priest, there's crying kids. That's not what it's about. It's about bringing the families in and encouraging them. And, um, you know, one lady had a, had a baby, she said, I don't know why, you know, I see other babies here and they're quiet, why aren't mine? Said, well, they hear every week. So come every week and you're going to get something. And they will learn how to behave. Um, and, and going to Mass, bringing things that, uh, that relate to the faith. You know, I know a lot of people bring toys, bringing cars, that's not going to do anything for them. In fact, that's the distraction. Bring things that they can they can uh, re um, and use and get comfortable with. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Reading the Bible, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And praying as well. Uh, going to youth groups. It's an awesome opportunity for kids to grow in faith and in, in fellowship. Um, music. There's all sorts of fantastic uh, Christian. Uh, Christian groups out there that that you know that's it's um, it really has progressed over the years and uh, it's quite enjoyable. Um, read inspirational books and magazines. There's a whole bunch of different things. And I, what I do, I have like a Franciscan um, University has daily inspirations. You can they can they come to me every single day, and it's just a little clip. In fact, that one about that I showed you from Father. Um, Father Larry at the beginning came in my mailbox just a couple of days ago. I was like, perfect, okay, that's great. You know, it comes and it's, it's beautiful. Um, and going to Christian bookstores and websites, I, I made a deal. My one son loves to fish, one of my foster sons, he loves fishing. And uh, he said, oh, come on, and you gotta come to this sale, you know, that big fishing store sale. 
um, in Burlington, and um, I said, oh, I can't imagine, two, two floors of fishing, it's like, oh, it's going to kill me. I said, I'll tell you what, Christmas is coming. I'll go there with you so you can show me what you like, and then you can come to me the, to the Christian bookstore, and I'll show you what I like. And he went, okay. I said, okay. You know, so you know, just kind of being, helping them get into your world, and it, it, it's a nice path so that you can open discussion. And little things to have around, you know, um, you know, medallions and teaching the kids what the medallions are and what they're for, and learning about their saints, knowing who our bishop is, prayer cards, uh, cards, at, with Christmas coming, you know, getting holy cards, getting cards from, like this one here is from um, um, Mount Carmel, from uh, uh, St. Teresa of Lisieux, the, uh, uh, what's it called, anyways, in Niagara Falls, so the Society of the Little Flower. So, this it, oh, so everybody who's going to get a Christmas card from, from from my family is going to be remembered in a ma in mass. So this way, we're sending out, we're evangelizing even to whether it's family or friends. We're letting them know that we're praying for them. Um, books like this here, this one here, did Jesus have a last name? You know, these kind of books, kids have questions too, and so I leave these on my table. And kids pick it up as they're, you know, waiting for, waiting to do their chart. Isn't that an oxymoron? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, it's just there, so they can pick up, read, and move on. It, it's just a little bit for yourselves. Reading, reading um, books that are inspired, you know, by uh, great writers. You know, uh, C.S. Lewis is one of them, a great Christian writer. Uh, G.K. Chesterton, another one. I mean, these are, these are gold. And you can learn so much about your own faith. And every day, our kids come home from school with planners. And they're wonderful to know what's going on tomorrow, but what's even better, what I think is even better, is there's always there's a, a, a quote, a scriptural quote, or reference to a saint, a saint's day, and to read them with the kids and have a discussion. There's two minutes, two minutes of bringing faith into, into your day. And so they're... they're Really, really helpful. Um, let's just see. Is there something else I want to mention? I guess we'll just move to the next one. So the Bible. Um, this is my favorite Bible, Catholic Youth Bible. And I looked over and I saw a whole bunch of them there. And I like this because it's it speaks their language. It is simpler, it's not uh, complicated, so if you're not comfortable with the Bible, you have, don't have a lot of experience, this is a great, a great place to, to be. And, um, but when it comes to the Bible, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I can't do that, it's too much, it's too intimidating. Um, or, you know, I often hear people say, well, you know what, it's just so violent. You know, the Bible is really violent, I don't know why people even want to read that. But, what, what I like to look at it is, is that um, it, it, it's, it teaches us, the Bible, God teaches us uh, just the way we teach our children progressively. So when they're young, uh, like the Old Testament, it's all about, you know, like um, it, there's such harsh punishment, like when, when uh, Lot's wife got turned to, to salt. Like, wow, why would he do that? Like, she just looked back for crying out loud. But he's like, but when you're with your kids, you know, and they're running across the road, and they almost get by, hit by a car, you go up and say, what are you doing? You're going to get killed. Don't be doing that. You know, like, we're pretty harsh when they're small just to get the message across. This is important. You know, it gets their attention. It tries to teach them. And then we move into to, to Psalms and Proverbs. And to me, they're just like songs. You know, just like, you know, you, you rock your child, you're comforting. If you go through the Psalms and the, and the Proverbs, there's just so much comfort in there and protection. And then we move into the New Testament, and you know we hear Jesus say so often, it's like, it's like he's talking to adolescents, like truly I tell you, you know this is real. And it, it, so, so we see kind of like young children uh, moving through to, to adolescence, and then you know older adolescents when they go off to university, it's almost like you know the, the letters, you know it, t telling about the journey, about what's happened, and and. Um, how it's kind of coming to fruition. And finally, Revelations, I always feel that that's, that talks to adults, it talks to us as we're matured enough to see where we're going and, 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 and kind of pulling it together with some meaning. 
So that's just a little bit how, how I feel that the Bible speaks and, and how I'm more open because I use it that way. And with the kids, you know, we need to be able to relax a bit and let them speak their language. And I, I can't, I, this is just so like my kitchen table at dinner time. So I was like, bro, do you want some, somebody to do something like that to you? Well, then don't do it to them. You know, like me. And it was too funny that I came across this one because the gospel last week was about the, it, um, what's the, the, um, uh, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. The, the greatest commandment. And here it was. It's too funny. The Spirit works wonderfully. It just kind of hands it to you, you know. But it really is about letting the kids speak what, how they, in their terms. And my son, uh, Noah, was uh, asked to go on a retreat with, his, with the, the grade 9, so he's going in grade 11. And he said, and we're doing the dishes, he said, so when he was at the retreat, it was good. He said, but mom, you know, when they said, she said, you know, go up and write down what you think, um, you know, what, what, what's a good way to describe Jesus. He says, so I went up and I wrote, Jesus is fly. Was that okay? I said, well, what does fly mean? He says, this means great. I said, it was good then. So just being open to their language and being able to incorporate it so that, you know, they can be, um, explore it more. If we cut it down and say, no, we have to only review it like this, then we're shutting them out. And, um, let me just go back here. How are we doing for time? What time do we have until 11.25? So I just want to make sure we have enough time for everything. I'm just going to tell you about this one, Steubenville. Has anybody heard of Steubenville? Oh. Steubenville is um, a youth conference. It's out of the States, it's out of the Franciscan University. It's massive. Everybody that I've talked to, because uh, it's for young people, who have gone have said it's been life-changing. Life-changing, deeper. I, I am committed Catholic after coming back from this. I have to show it. There we are. If you don't know about it, then you have to see it. Weekend celebration of, of, of our faith.
go all out and show their work for them. My favorite part was the uh, next session was uh, something else. He got to me very deeply. What he said was really Everything was awesome. Small group sessions. Me and the people. Talks we had. It was so really. I like the dancing face powder. Definitely confession. It's, you know, we'll let this and I'll let this load off the shoulder. Heavy iteration. Adoration. 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 Absolutely. Everyone said adoration, but I'm going to say adoration. That's what's up. The whole experience is so fascinating. It made me just feel this love and this warmth. And I really put my hand out. And it just feels like you definitely feel the type of guy. I've never experienced anything like this before. Having this weekend, I was like, it's just overwhelming. That's the feeling that you have to be happy. What can you experience? It's like the way I think about my faith. Um, I want to be close to Jesus. I want to read my Bible every day. It's like the best in the world. Like, seriously, this is the best in the world. Was that exciting? I, I just I just want my children to experience that. I want to go. <laughs> it is, um, and I, like I said, I've known, known people who have gone, adults who have gone, and they say that it was it changed their life. And so if there's ever a, a trip to go on, skip Disney, send your kids to this, because this is going to change their lives. Um, there's something else. Oh, now, when you go, when you look up Steubenville, I left their email, or their email address, or not the email, their website on the yellow sheet over there. Um, there are sessions in um, the East Coast, in New Brunswick, I think in the summer, for this coming summer, so. Oh. So, prayer is a conversation with God. That's how we bring our children to, uh, to, a, to a place of quiet and a place where they can understand, um, they can understand God better. And at this point, I'd like to do a, a little meditation um, on prayer. I mean, now there's different kinds of prayers. You know, we, we uh, have the formal prayers, the prayers that we always say, and then there's spontaneous prayers, and, and that's important to teach your children to do that too. Grace is a great place to do that. Everybody says grace, and then have somebody each each night do a, um, you know who they're praying for or do spontaneous prayer. Um, so let's take a, a couple minutes and. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer, okay? And then we're going to uh, do it in a meditative state. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We went through that pretty fast. So now we're going to say it slowly. Actually, I'm going to say it, and we're going to look at, at um, the meaning of, the, of those words. Before we begin, I'd like you to take a few, three deep, slow breaths in and out. And try to focus your mind on the words. Father, our Creator, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, who's in heaven, who's in all eternity, from the beginning to the end, there is no end, all eternity in heaven. Holy is your name, your kingdom Your will be done, whether we want it or not, your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, today, now, our daily bread. Our daily bread, how you knew that 
bread was something we need every single day and that we need you every single day. We need the body of Christ every single day. And forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sinful ways and our thoughts and our words. What we've done what we haven't. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We forgive others through your example, through Jesus' example, that we can forgive others. And lead us not into temptation. Temptation is everywhere, from our thoughts, from, from our actions. Temptation is there. But deliver us from evil. Evil awaits for us. Please protect us. Have us turn away. Amen. Amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we pray with our children, taking apart those prayers the best you can teaches them to look at prayers differently so that it's not just a rhyming off of it, that, there, that there's meaning and depth into each one of those prayers. One of my favorite prayers um, is uh, Hail Holy Queen. It is so rich when you take apart each piece. So try it. And try it with your family. And, and, and not kind of hurry it through. Because that's often what we do. One of the things that um, we do, I ask the grade eights to do, is to, as we drive through town, you know, you often find people who um, are, are less fortunate, that you always see on the street, you know, sitting on the corner smoking a cigarette, walking down the street. You know that their that their life is challenged. Say, find that one person and pray for them every day. Every time you see them, say, God bless them. Please, God bless them. That's all you have to do. And by doing that, you're working on your soul work too. You're getting something from that. But they are too. They have somebody to uh, pray for them. And it's amazing that, you know, at the beginning of the year, I'll say, find somebody. And at the end of the year, I'll say, how are we making out? They're still praying for that person. It's beautiful. And I have my kids do the same thing. And I came across the fellow that I always pray for. I was working at, uh, for the fall fair and I was selling tickets as a volunteer and he comes up to get his ticket. And I was so happy to see him. I've never talked to him. I've been praying for him for years. And I was so happy to see him. I said, how are you? And he's like, good. <laughs> Would you like a ticket? I wanted to buy him the ticket. He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, you have a great day. He's like, okay. I was just so thrilled to actually <laughs> talk to him. But anyway, so find that person. Find somebody to pray for that, that needs your prayers and, and, and bless them. Or places. You know, there's a, a, a house that uh, I know there's, you know, recovering addicts. You know, and I think all these men there and how challenged they are and how hard their fa must be for their families not to have them. Every time I go, please God bless them. So bless these places. Ask for God's blessing on, on things that people and places that you know need your, your, your prayers. Sorry, I would like to add something just to that part. Um, I asked my kid to pray for somebody. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one day he's, he told me something and he said, Mom, tell Papi because Papi get upset if I say that. If you, said to, you, see, if you tell to him, he's not going to be upset. And I said, okay, Johan, today we are going to pray for Papi. That when Papi get upset, he doesn't reach that point that we get afraid about what he's doing, what he's saying. And then my little one, when he has hard time for something with his dad during the day, he said, Mom, today is Papi turn. We are going to pray for Papi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah they, they learn, they know. Yeah, they know. And, 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 it's, uh, and they, they teach us. Like, you know, when they went in that one, uh, one of those clips where they were making the sign of the cross in public, and he says, do you really want to do that? You know, uh, we do grace all the time, but I, in restaurants, I find myself going like that, and my kids, oh, we have to say grace. They don't think twice about it. It's like, oh, only, you know, the, our children do lead us. In those times that we hesitate, they're going on forward. Um, 
We have three minutes left. And I have, let me just see here. I'm just going to say, involve your children in your practice of your faith. Um, use everything. I mean, when you go to stores, buy these things and use them. They inspire. Leave them around the house. Keep them in your pocket. Keep, you know, let your kids see you pray and be involved. Um, join groups. Join um, uh, let me hear it. the Knights of Columbus, uh, the Catholic Women's League. Be involved in your parish. Um, be involved uh, at the school level and ask for faith. If there's not enough faith happening in your in, in the classroom, ask for it. Don't be afraid to say, "I we you know, this is important for our children." Um, that, again, it's, there's never enough time. But the um, you're going to be hearing about the Catholicism project that we're, that the CPIC is uh, starting up. It's a pilot project, and uh, Father Baron. Uh, I don't has anybody heard of this? Yes, some of you have. Uh, look it up. It's called Word on Fire, and it's a whole um, teaching about the Catholic faith, and it's beautiful. I had a video to show you of, the, of it, um, but we're going to be doing this uh, at different parishes and bringing in um, all the family families to come in. Parents can see the videos. The kids are going to be, uh, the girls will be with, uh, with, with a girls group. The boys are going to be with the Knights of Columbus, you know, at the school taking faith from their perspective and, and then coming back into the uh, into the church for the final session. It's going to be a six-week session. Go back to the church. And so these are for families who are kind of, that want to learn more or sitting on the fence or, or dads, Catholic, moms not. How do we get involved? Just to learn in a, in a, in a non-threatening way more about the faith. And I can't, I just can't express enough how important it is to be involved. And the kids really learn a lot. Let me see here, here. So I think I'm going to show you the other thing that um, that you're going to see and hear more about it in your schools is that we're trying to get these CDs into all the all the schools at the office, uh, wherever the displays. And actually, the Deacon Pat Warren, he's downstairs. He's got the display out there. We're really trying to get, see because trying to get these into the schools, so please support your schools and say, yes, we want this, because there's, I don't know if any of these people have seen these before. Uh, my, my husband says that listening to these, uh, he could he could write a book on how, how it saved his, saved his life. Just because he, he drive to work, it's an hour and a half there, an hour and a half back, he'd be listening to these all the time. And um, there's just so many great topics, building better families. I think last time I gave these ones up, there are, um, year of the faith or CDs there so please take one um, but encourage your school your school council to um, to get these into the class into the schools and if we can have this this display available for every school that's um, that's amazing because one CD is usually passed through it twice so three people will see each year here each CD so that's just a wonderful way to evangelize and it's so easy you pop it into your you know, the CD player as you're doing your dishes. Uh, the kids here, I, I drive down, I take kids to therapy. It's an hour in, I play mine one way, I play their stuff the next way. That way everybody hears and they actually listen and go home and have a comment or something. So they're a um, they're really important way of, of evangelizing and building faith. So I know that it's time. If you'd like, I can play this Catholicism. It's only three minutes. Um, to give you an idea that you can actually look this stuff up. You can buy this or you can uh, go online and find out about it. But if you have to leave, please feel free. There's, um, if you're interested in a presentation like this at your school, don't hesitate. Just leave me your number or take a card and call me. I'd be so happy to do that. And there's uh, the yellow pieces of paper for you for some more information and resources. And don't forget your CD. And I thank you. I'm going to play this Hello, and everyone. Want. I'd just like to announce work session number one is complete. Workshop sessions number two will begin at 11.35. Thank you. The church is going through a dark period. The church is under fire. It's under attack. The Catholic story is being told, but being told by the wrong people in the wrong way. We need to 
tell our own story. We need to get the message out so as to draw people in. Catholicism is smart. Catholicism is beautiful. Catholicism is colorful. It's textured. It engages the mind and the heart and the body. Christianity always has an explosive power. If we let it be itself, it always has this transformative power. How do you find joy? The sure sign that God has aligned in you is joy. I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. That's what Jesus said. Catholicism at its heart is not a no, it's a yes. In fact, it's the story of the whole world. It's your story. If you are interested in bringing this program to your school, please let your parent council know, and we'll make sure that it might take some time, but we'll be happy to be there. Okay? I thank you all for coming, and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.